All right, Jeff back here from Picture Time. Haven't been around here for a while, and I know that we normally post like cruise ship travel tour stuff, but really this channel is about making good memories with your family and doing those things on a budget. One of the things my dad and I, who's here today, did when we were growing up was we built and launched model rockets. So actually this last year, my dad bought this Estes or Estes Crossfire ISX rocket for my 10 year old son, Nolan, for his birthday. We finally got it painted and we have a beautiful day here in Minnesota. Believe it or not, it actually does get nice in Minnesota. And we're gonna launch a rocket today and we're gonna try and film it from the air. So stick around. Hi dad. Hi there, hi. Tell us about this rocket and how we got it to where we are right now. Well, Nolan's rocket, I'll take it apart to kind of show you where we got it. We got it ready, ready to launch, but when the charge blows out, the parachute will come out. And I always like to cut a hole in the parachute so that it doesn't take forever to come down. I just bought two different types of engines. There's an A and a B and a C, and they all have different thrusts. And there's a number four or a number six, that's how much fuel is in the rocket. A B4 will fire for four seconds, and a B6 will fire for six seconds. And then there's another number that comes after it. The second number is how long between when the first stage burns out until there's a charge that goes off that shoots a paper wad out the top of the engine to deploy the parachutes. A B4 four will fire for four seconds, and then four seconds later, the charge will blow and the parachute will come out. All right, so let's hear about this launch pad. Well, back when uh, the space program was just starting in a Gemini and Apollo, I decided to build this launch pad. I took a piece of plywood, made a circle, and I put some brackets on it so that it has, it has a tilt with a little wing nut, some angle brackets, and I've got a few, uh, few rocket launches off that. You buy a rod, you can get these at the hardware store. You probably get the smallest one because on the side of the rocket, is always installed a, a like a, it looks like a drinking straw and it just has to be able to slide. It guides the rocket in the first three feet. We're gonna put that in there and we're gonna try to tilt it into the wind a little bit so that when it arches over and comes back, it'll come back to us. So now we're gonna assemble the rocket ready for launch. We have the parachute ready to go. We, I always check it to make sure that it's got fluff and then you, then you fold it carefully on itself so that it doesn't get all crinkled and tight. You want it as loose as possible. I think we fold it over a couple times. We stuffed a little piece of toilet paper wad that goes in there because the, the engine has a explosion that shoots the, the wad of paper out to eject it and it can get hot. If you don't have a wad of paper in there protecting it, it could melt your parachute and then the parachute wouldn't open. You don't want that to happen. I use that same kind of tissue paper after I eat spicy food to protect from the heat. But, um, very, very good advice there, son. Okay, so the next thing we do is we have to install the engine. In this case, the Estes company has a little bracket that helps hold the engine in place. So this goes in here and it kind of clicks in place. We have a fuse. The fuse has like a little match material on the end. So when the current goes through the wire, it glows red it sort of lights the match. And this is the part that goes up inside the engine right there. Custis gives you these little plugs to help hold that in place. So you take one of them out and it goes right there. It holds the fuse, it keeps it from coming out. And then there's two leads that come out of there. So two days ago, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the first man that ever set foot on the moon. You watched that whole thing unfold, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I watched it live. Sat on the couch for nine hours that day. So we're gonna launch this launch in memory of the first walk on the moon, July 20th, 1969. Yes. We're actually filming on July 22nd today, but we'll launch this in memory of that. Amazing watching those videos of Apollo 11. Hello, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. <laughs> I was going to do the same thing. <laughs> okay, so that's ready to go. 
Now, we have to determine the position of the wind right now. We've got a soccer field with some little flags on here and it's kind of gusting a little bit. So we want to wait to launch until we feel it's kind of calm. But anyway, let's put a little angle to it so, it so it heads into the wind. And then after it arches over for four seconds, so the charge will go, the parachute will open. And if we've done it right, it'll drift back to within this field where we can almost catch it. Got about a 50 foot piece of like, I think doorbell wire that I hooked on to uh, essentially a doorbell. And then coming out the other side is just some clip leads to put onto some kind of a battery. I borrowed your boat battery and 12 volts is 25. I think in our day we used to use like a dry cell. So we're gonna clear the area, we're gonna hook up the leads and then Nolan is gonna do the countdown. Hopefully we'll get his rocket back after the first, the first maiden voyage of his rocket. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, it's going that way. Go that way. Do you see it? Hey! Oh! All right, so what I learned was that it's really hard to film a rocket launch from a drone. It's really small and I couldn't find it in the screen in the bright sun. And on top of that, a whole bunch of soccer players got into the field, so we were only able to launch the rocket once. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this, you'd like to see others like it, please hit the like button, please subscribe, and we'll see you the next time around. Thanks for watching.